Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today for the second part of the Fadeaway Flotation Center shelf build. Whenever the next video is available, I'll link it in the description as well as the video before this if you haven't seen it yet. I've been wanting to try this kind of finish for a little while. That stuff you saw me jiggling around in the jar earlier was actually steel wool and apple cider vinegar. I'd let it sit there for quite a while until all the stuff uh, dissolved and rusted away. So unlike a stain where you're putting a dye into the wood, what this stuff does is it actually chemically interacts with the tannins on the wood. So as I go over it, you can see how it kind of slowly fades to the color that it's going to turn out to be. As an experiment, I used both oak and maple because I didn't know which one I was going to like the look of the wood better with after I'd used the process on it. I ended up going with the oak on the outsides and the maple on the back. After the wood was colored, the next step was to trim it down to the size I needed for the base. I have a pretty small table saw, so I didn't want to make a cut quite this long on this big of a piece of wood. So marking out the measurements on it, I'm going to use this other piece of plywood as a fence to use a circular saw along. The only part of this that's a little bit tricky is that you have to measure over from the edge of the circular saw over to the blade and include the kerf in it when you're making your final measurements. After I got all the pieces their final size, I wanted to make it so this base was a usable area for them to store stuff in. So I'm going to cut a couple of rectangles out of this back area. I didn't want all these pieces to just be a plain rectangular opening, so what I'm doing right now is I'm marking out where the center of my Forstner bit's going to go, and that's going to allow me to have kind of a rounded profile where all of the corners intersect. With the Forstner bits in these veneers, it's really important that you don't go all the way through with them because you'll get a lot of tear out on the other side. So I'm going almost all the way through just so the tip pokes out, then I'm coming from the other side to cut away the hole. With the first one done, all I gotta do is repeat it seven more times. Funny how these projects make your drill grow a tail sometimes. After I had all the radiuses of the corners done, it was time to go back and mark again and just join the very outside edges so I could come back and connect them. I'm going to make sure my lines are straight the same way. I'm going to put down a fence like I did to cut the long pieces. Now, if you aren't comfortable with this next technique, certainly do not use it. Uh, plunge cuts are a little bit more advanced. Uh, but I feel comfortable with it. They feel pretty safe to me. The other way a person could certainly do this if they aren't comfortable with that is to use a jigsaw. I tend to find the edges aren't exactly at 90 degrees when I use that, and I really didn't want to have a whole lot of finishing with this one. With the circular saw, you do have to be careful to not cut all the way through to the radius on the other side. Um, so what I did is I came back and I used a handsaw just to finish up the cuts. Otherwise, you'll go too far on one side, not far enough on the other side. You end up with an ugly line there. With all the major cutting, it was time to go on to assembly. If you've never seen these things before, they're pretty cool. They're uh, corner end clamps. They're real cheap. I think it was about three or four bucks at Harbor Freight. Stick them on there, mock everything up, and you don't have to worry about everything tipping over, having two people around. Going through here, cleaning up some of the openings, making those radiuses match with the lines, and kind of smoothing everything out. To make sure there's no ridges that are going to interfere with assembly and throw things off square, I always hit it with a little bit of sandpaper before they glue up. That extra set of hands there was my brother. He was nice enough to come over and help me with the assembly of this. We're putting the top on right now. With the oak plywood, it's really important to pre-drill your hole so it doesn't split whenever you drive the screw down inside there. I always really like using decking screws for any of this sort of thing. Um, you don't really need them because it's not going to be outside, but they have a Torx head on them. And when you try and use the Phillips or the flat head, it seems like they always want to strip out or frustrate you somehow. After that, I had a chance to dry, flipped it over, now I'm doing the bottom on there, you can tell because it's the maple. And we're just going to do the same thing, go through, pre-drill everything. I'm also going to chamfer these ones, it seemed like the maple, for some reason, it would split a little bit more when I was driving the screw down in there. Not sure if the veneer was a little bit thinner on it or what was going on, but... So I think the base would have been strong enough without these, but what I'm doing here is I got a couple of 2x4s and I'm going to glue them and screw them inside this bottom part just to make sure there's no issues with strength. There's going to be quite a bit of weight from the wood on the top and then plus whatever they're going to stack onto it. 
just like any two by four that you get at the home store. There's a little bit of a bone and it wasn't quite straight. So what I did is I clamped it to it uh, just to make sure there was no gaps in there for the glue and for the screws that I was putting in. Sometime shortly after this is when I realized I had made a mistake. When I was cutting the side pieces, I had cut them so they would fit inside the square on the ends here. And then I put a two by four on the way. So I had to come back and I had to cut out the areas for the two by four. Wasn't a big deal, you aren't gonna see it. Um, I was planning on putting trim around all these parts anyway. I just had to make a little spot for them. So, glued the end pieces in, screwed them in, and now it's ready to get the bottom ready. Right now I'm finishing the bottom. I wanted to go ahead and do this before I flipped it over. Uh, of course, it's gonna be a lot harder to finish the bottom if I have to tip it over with all the superstructure on top of there. More out of curiosity than anything else, I went ahead and put the clear on the back too. I wanted to see how that maple looked with the finish on there. The other thing I did is I went in these corners and I took a little drum sander just to get those little ridges that you can see all evened out and make a nice transition. The other part I wanted to get some finish on before I flipped it over was this inside and the sealing of it. Obviously you aren't going to be able to see this, but I wanted to go ahead and seal everything up while it was easy and accessible. One of the things the customer really wanted was for this thing to be mobile and have some casters on it. So what I'm doing right now, cutting out a little bit of reinforcement so the casters are going to have some more meat to uh, stick into through the bottom of that. Went ahead and rounded everything over. Here I'm showing you where they're going to sit. I'm using that same piece of wood to space it out just to show me exactly where, how far the edges go in. I'm using some pretty thick screws on these so instead of just buzzing them right in there what I have to do is attach that plate on the bottom, suck it up, glue it in, and I'm going to have to drill through the entire thing with a bit. Um, otherwise it would be really hard to get the screws to not split everything. Swapped over to this other side here, drilling them in. I wanted to give the glue a little bit of a chance to dry. I had to take those screws out so they didn't stick through to the bottom before I stuck the casters on top of it. Then it was just a matter of drilling all the pilot holes, screwing all the screws in, and getting the casters all rusty and installed. So after it was ready to flip over, it was time to start measuring out for all the trim that I was going to put on there. This part was all relatively straightforward. Uh, figure out how long it needs to be, cut it out to size, and stick it on the side there. The majority of the strength for this molding is going to be the glue on there, but to keep it in place while it dried, I went ahead and used a finished nailer on it. It'll add a little bit of strength in the end. Most of it's going to come from the glue, though. I started out using clamps to hold it on. Turned out it wasn't really necessary. I just put it on there and stapled it in. Even though I did pre-drill the holes when I went to stick these on the first time, I noticed that it wasn't quite flush with the edge there, so I had to come back with the belt sander, just to even everything out, and you could see exactly where the screws were going through and where it was holding it away from the workpiece. The board's real thick, so I had to run them all through the table saw to get them down to their final size. I had done kind of a rough calculation in my head, but I ended up with yeah, about 12 inches extra of the stock when I was done, so I guess I made it pretty well. After I got those first side pieces on, it started going a little bit slower because I had to make sure that they fit exactly in between those two without any gap. Uh, so quite a bit of cutting long and then just sneaking up on the cut. Going through and ripping down the solid oak for the rest of the trim on the base here. Now again, when I went to put this trim on, there's a little bit of an overhang on these boards. What I'm going through doing here is just uh, using a plane to get everything perfectly even so there's no gap in there. I sure if you'll be able to tell in the super sped up video here, but I actually am doing a mitered corner for the very top piece. I figured that'd have a little bit better of a finished look to it. Now on these parts, I'm purposely leaving a bit of a lip on it that uh, goes over the edge. That way I'll be able to take my flush trim router after they're all glued and dried and true everything up. Doing a little bit of a look around on it. It's actually starting to come together and look like a finished base. This is but basically what all the trim's gonna look like on it. Got this router as a gift from my wife. This is the first time I got to use it. 
I went and splurged on a really expensive bit to make sure there wasn't a whole lot of finishing that I'd have to do on there. I did the majority of the color change earlier, but I wanted to go back, and I don't know if anybody will ever notice this after it's finished, but I wanted to do kind of a fade from red to a really dark black in the middle. Um, the original treatment, I think it was because they had the veneer on there and maybe some of the glue had seeped through, but in the deep recesses of the grain, you could still see some of the really light wood. So I'm going over it with the red on the outside for the fade and then the black on the inside. Next thing I did is I went in with some wood filler and I'm just hitting all the cracks that I had in there still and then any of the nail holes from the finished nailer. So after that stuff was all dry, there's a few little things I needed to finish up on there just to get everything smooth. Um, but we're basically done with the base at this point, ready to start working on the top. Originally I was going to stain the trim on the bottom a little bit darker, maybe in red. When I started thinking about it, I figured it would match the natural wood on the top a little bit better if I left it like this. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. I would love if you give me a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and leave links to the next video and the video before this in the description when they're ready.